In the E2 reaction, a good leaving group, such as a halide or a sulfonate, is displaced as a proton is concurrently lost from the adjacent beta position to a strong base. The product is an alkene. E2 stands for second order elimination. The sole step of the reaction is the rate determining step and it mechanistically involves both the base and the substrate. Therefore, the reaction rate depends on the concentration of both species. This makes it a second order process. The E2 reaction necessitates a strong base that will actively pull the proton from the beta position. Strong bases are often anions, such as hydroxide, alkoxides, hydride, or amides. There are, however, neutral strong bases as well. DBU and DBN are two examples of neutral strong bases. In this specific example, ethoxide serves as a strong base which actively removes a proton from the beta position. As the carbon-hydrogen sigma bond fragments, those electrons collapse in between alpha and beta, thereby forcing chloride from the molecule. The product is an alkene. The regiochemical outcome of the reaction depends on the size of the base. Small, nimble bases can reach any beta proton they want. As a result, they are able to remove a proton from the more highly substituted beta position to yield the more highly substituted and therefore more stable Zaitsev product. For example, in this case, methoxide is a small, nimble alkoxide base it can remove a proton from this beta position, which yields a tri-substituted alkene product, which is the Zaitsev product in this instance. On the other hand, big bulky bases can reach only the most accessible beta protons, and those reside on the less highly substituted beta position. Removing protons from these locations minimizes steric hindrance in the transition state, but it results in the less highly substituted and consequently less stable product, which is known as the Hoffman product. In this specific example, terc-butoxide is a big bulky base. It cannot reach the more highly substituted beta position, like methoxide could, Instead, it removes a proton from the less highly substituted beta prime position. As electrons collapse in between alpha and beta, bromide is displaced and the less highly substituted Hoffman product results. The E2 reaction proceeds through an antiperiplanar transition state, meaning that the beta proton and the leaving group must be aligned 180 degrees relative to one another. If two beta protons are present, the favored transition state will minimize the steric clash between the alkyl groups, leading to a trans product. In this specific example, methoxide serves as a strong base, which removes a proton from this beta position, the electrons from the carbon-hydrogen sigma bond collapse in between alpha and beta, and iodide is displaced as a leaving group. There are two choices for transition states that place the beta proton and the iodide leaving group antiperiplanar to one another. However, in one of these transition states, the two alkyl groups experience a Gaussian interaction. This is therefore not the favored transition state. The preferable transition state places the two alkyl groups opposite one another, minimizing their steric hindrance. And this results in a trans orientation of those alkyl groups in the product. When only one beta proton is present, the stereochemistry of the substrate dictates the configuration of the product. For instance, in this specific example, methoxide, 
a small, strong base, will remove a proton from the more highly substituted beta position, leading to the more highly substituted Zaitsev product. However, there is only a single transition state that places the beta proton antiperiplanar to the tosylate leaving group. And in that transition state, the ethyl group is cis to the methyl group on the neighboring carbon. This yields the configuration of the alkene product shown here. It's worth noting that this would not appear to be a preferred product because we would anticipate that we would prefer to see the two smaller methyl groups cis to one another as opposed to having one methyl group cis to a larger ethyl group. However, this is the only product that can be formed as a result of the requirement for the antiperiplanar geometry in the transition state. In summary, the E2 reaction is a concerted process in which the loss of leaving group and removal of a beta proton occur concurrently. A strong base is required to actively remove the beta proton. And the regiochemical outcome depends on the size of that strong base. Bulky bases predominantly yield the Hoffman product, while unhindered bases will yield the Zaitsev product instead. The concerted nature of this reaction has consequences. For instance, the leaving group and the beta proton must be aligned antiperiplanar to one another since they are removed at the same time. When two beta protons are available, the product will have the larger substituents in the more stable trans orientation. However, when only one beta proton is present, the antiperiplanar elimination geometry dictates which isomer of the product will be formed. Since this reaction involves no carbocation intermediates, no carbocation rearrangement is possible. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd or in paperback format from Amazon, as well as paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.